Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy, founder of QuickMailers.io. Hey, and this is Jack, Chief Lead Generation Officer at SalesBread.com. Today, we've got a rapid fire. Rapid fire. Damn, I wasn't rapid, rapid enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Today, it's a quick one. And with that, a quick word from our sponsors. Go to SalesBread.com slash contact if you want to get in touch about our lead generation service that brings you one lead per day. All right. Go to QuickMailers.io. Best uh, call email outreach software for email with auto warmer. Good deliverability. Go there. <laughs> okay. Question number one. In 2022, is there ever a good reason to prioritize ramping up sending volume? Hmm. <laughs> you hmm. take it? I take it? Uh, I yeah, know. I'll take what? it. Sure. Okay, so it. there is never a good reason to prioritize ramping up sending volume. You should prioritize number of leads and sales opportunities generated. Think that way, not volume first, right? Mm. It's kind of a subtle thing, but I don't think you get there by prioritizing ramping up volume. Yeah, I agree. Next question. Next question. <laughs> How are people cold emailing in the UK these days? Is there a good hack or is it just about being comfortable with the GDPR risk? Jeremy, you're in Europe. Uh, our European correspondents weighing in on this <laughs> issue. Jeremy, you're live. Yes. Yeah, so hi, Jack. Uh, in UK, business as usual, you know, basically no one really cares these days. I think GDPR was a big scarecrow um, and Basically, people carry on. They have processes to prove that we contacted Jack at salesbread.com because it fits the profile of, of potentially people who would be interested in our solution. And I think that's how they get uh, around it. Of course, don't do that with individuals. And I think you'll be fine most of the time. Well, you've heard it here, folks. But it's, it's GDPR not took advice. off like a wounded duck. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Uh, All right. What's the difference between cold email and LinkedIn outreach? I'll take this first stab. You have more contacts with context with LinkedIn outreach. There's the profile that's a click away. There's the title. And there's also uh, recommendations on a profile that are within arm's reach. I think it's um, a little bit easier to get some context for the conversation, which means you might not have to be as uh, verbose as explaining yourself and your services than with cold email um, for that reason. Yeah, I love it. Uh, okay. Just add to that, when you send emails, people got your name and you know your first name, last name, um, and your email address. So don't say, my name is Jeremy Chatelain, because it's this, the same way that you wouldn't put into an invite in LinkedIn this mm. is all my resume. So with LinkedIn, this is cool because you get that that sort of like card. context. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's good. It's all good. Okay. Jeremy, next question. I haven't done cold emailing in a few years, but I'm going back to it. What's the one thing I should know about uh, things that have changed so I don't screw everything up? <laughs> Warm up your inbox. I think that's an okay. easy one, right? Don't, like don't it. start straight away to go cold outreach uh, if okay. you don't have, you know, warmed up inbox. I mean, a couple of years ago, by the domain starts rock and roll, mm -hmm. you know, dynamic mountain and stuff like that, uh, not happening anymore. Right. And I, I would say what's changed, volume won't save you now. A couple of years ago, it could, but now you have to get very clear on right person, right message. Yep. Focus on that and don't use volume as a crutch. All right, next question. I just added my first three salespeople to my team. So from a deliverability standpoint, is there anything wrong with setting each one up with a new cold email inbox and letting them send 100 emails a day, assuming that I have an auto warmer? Man, I don't know. What, what would you make of this one? I would say, are you ready to ramp up? Do you know that your cold emails are going to resonate? I don't think you do at this point. So I would say just pick one account. Hopefully the other two salespeople can use existing leads to keep themselves busy and make sure you've got a sequence that people want to respond to that has a double digit reply rate ideally before you assign that to two other team members. Yeah. And from a point of deliverability, I would say do double check what they are doing because they could be 
you know, is sending trash that would actually endanger the whole domain. So be slightly careful with that. Right. Some supervision required. Okay, next question. I'm cold emailing people in Europe. How do I navigate the languages? Is it even worth translating everything? If so, how many languages do you recommend starting with? Once again, back to our correspondent in Europe, Jeremy. <laughs> okay, I'll take it back. Hey, Jack. Uh, so here, you know, nothing changes. <laughs> I'm having too you want also me to speak in French. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, basically what's interesting, um, what I always find interesting is that when you outreach in, you know, in French, for example, or in Italian or whatever, make sure someone can speak that language because it's not just a matter of translating because it's only opening a door. And then if people reply to you in blah, 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 and then you have to use Google Translate, it's going to be a tough time. Um, what I always find useful and interesting for is to reach out with a snippet of that language. So you sort of like acknowledge that they speak a different language, that you reach out to them specifically, and then and then fall back. The rest to is in English. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And is that enough to get the language benefit? I believe so to some extent. Yeah. I've heard there's some exceptions depending which country you're going after. I think um, Germany. Um, the Netherlands, they want uh, German and Dutch respectively yeah. more than, say, sure. somebody in the Nordic regions. But it's the same, I think, for every right. country. If you send, like, like, for example, when I send called outreach in French, I have a better yeah. chance of people replying that if I send them in English. Makes yeah. Sense. Okay. So what I would... That uh, what it, grew, you know, the yeah. liking principle. Okay. So it sounds like you don't need a as much translation as you once thought, try the snippet idea, like you mentioned, Jeremy, but also um, think about what country you're reaching out to. You may not need to translate it all. Maybe if you're going after say Germany, okay, throw up a German campaign, <laughs> something like yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, next question. How are cold email pros tracking deliverability, not open rates? Jeremy, I'm very curious what you think. So what's the question again? Sure. So how are cold email pros tracking deliverability, not open rates? I have a, I have a theory. What do you mean not um, without, uh, without using open right. rates? Right. So I want you to talk about uh, how you can see where your emails are landing, what folder. Oh, you mean, yeah. For example, you could use some tools for that. That will be part of your, part of your you know, email sequence or whatever. You also send to some monitoring inboxes. We got plenty on QuickMail, for example. And if you send them uh, to your monitoring inboxes, then we will tell you where it lands. So does it land in you know, promotional tab? Does it land in the inbox? Does it land in spam? Uh, in fact, we just had like one people posting on Facebook today um, how happy he was. He was using the auto warmer since September last year, so a couple a few months ago. And then he showed us the graph of how they went from all red to all green. That was beautiful. I almost cried, you know, like, but um, yeah. So do that. Use, so use the auto warmer, not just use to warm tools. Up your stuff. Exactly. Yeah. But to also give you a hint as to am I still there? In fact, I use that myself with my own um, campaign, outreach campaigns. If I see a bit too much red, I let, let that inbox pause and, and rest a bit, or I revisit my campaign. Uh, I rarely. Okay pay too much attention to the open rate personally, honestly. Enough said, let's uh, carry on. Yeah, Should fire. I get a bunch of copywriting books in order to improve my cold email, cold outreach writing, or should I just test lots of messages to get better? I have my views hmm. on this. What's yours, Jack? Yeah, so, okay. It's, it's kind of simple. Yes, it's nice to learn good copywriting best practices. But the art of cold email writing is different than writing home pages, landing pages, sales pages, video sales letters, newspaper, magazine ads. Each format, each medium has its own way to get somebody to react. Now, sure, having a good direct response background is going to be your friend. But you also need to know what's working in the world of cold email. And since this is a rapid fire, I'll make it brief. But that's why we built the cold email masterclass. You can find <laughs> several modules. No, seriously, like uh, it, 
I know, I just beyond copywriting books. <laughs> no, I, I, I wish this was available for me. Yep. That's why uh, it needs to be said. There's several modules on cold email copywriting. So please, uh, course.quickmail.io is where you can find out more. Take it for a 30 day test uh, drive. If you hate it, if it doesn't blow your mind, or if you're just a sneaky person who wants to sn take a sneak peek um, without paying, I guess you can still do that. But I, I do recommend it if you're looking to improve your copywriting chops in 2022. Okay. Anything you would want to add to that, Jeremy? Yeah, my take to this, I think you don't need to have a copywriting you know, book or whatever. Um, because I believe that email for call outreach is closer to a conversation than it is to writing. So I would recommend you, you, you pick up more on what's an easy way to build up rapport very quickly. Uh, so psychology of um, uh, you know, NLP, for example, those sort of things that actually helps you to very quickly build rapport. Um, With strangers. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So consider you know, you're, you're grabbing someone out of the shop. What are you going to tell them very quickly so you get their attention? And it's, you're not right. going to write the sales letters for them, right? It's not going to work. It's a different art. It's more yeah. the art of speaking uh, with someone that it is to. Uh, I, um, I knew a couple people that were involved with, uh, I don't even know what you call them, like a dating, like a, what's it called? Like a pickup artist. They would right, take right. these pickup artist that seminars good and they speak. ended up being very good marketers because of it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so psychology uh, is a human psychology. And the last thing I would say is like have a simple mental framework, introduction, value proposition, CTA. If you just do that and you pick up the right people, you can get away yeah. with not knowing anything yeah. about copywriting. Well, you, could, you actually probably know more copywriting than you think at that level. But last question, ah, two more questions. I'm trying to pitch cold email to my company, but my boss says, isn't that just for startups? What would you say to this? I would say find a different company. Uh, no, that's a bit extreme. Next. That's a bit extreme, but it's it's pretty easy. Just make a list of the companies that um, use cold email. You can find a lot of company emails floating around the internet to make your case. Just find the least startup -y and say, hey, um, did you know hospitals use cold email and book publishers use cold email and just drop a few industries that are also very much into the world. And if that doesn't do it, I, I, I might look at other options in terms of employment. <laughs> Jeremy, what do you got? I, I think honestly, every boss like CEO or stuff like that actually did do cold email, whether they call it like that or not, you know, reaching out to your network or talk, reaching out to someone else. They don't know. It's not because they don't do it on automation that they don't do cold outreach. They do cold outreach one way or another. So yeah, I wouldn't hang, be hang out on the terminology and I would just, you know, use whatever they're using and say, Hey, we need to reach out to people who don't know us. And I think we're going to use email for that. Okay. Well said. So last question. I'm a solo founder, still cold emailing with my good old Gmail address. So jack at gmail.com. It's working well. Do I really need to you switch to a company email? Don't write jack at, email at gmail.com. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. Don't email me there. I won't get it. Um, so <laughs> I think we're going to disagree here. I'm in the camp of all right. Have you been doing it more than six months? Like really, is it working well? Or are you just saying you had a good week last week? If you have six months of results coming in, you're happy. People are responding, positive responses coming in, sales are being closed. You're probably sending to the right group with the right message. And if you don't plan on having someone else come in and help you with this, keep doing it. What do you think, Jeremy? I think it's dead. Um, but it's working well. Do I really have to switch? I don't believe it is. And you're going to be very quickly um, blocked. I don't think it's working anymore because... So, so there's no the listener who's had a, a campaign running with a Gmail address I, for six months. The, uh, I have a look at the quick mail data, but I can honestly tell you that the landscape, the landscape has shifted. So if you're doing that, avoid doing it because anyway, as soon as you get blocked, you get blocked forever uh, with Gmail. So careful with that. 
Um, but hey, we'll come back in a future episode with the actual data on it. So let's postpone the answer for now. Can we do okay, that well, this in has rapid been... fire, postponing an answer? Uh, yes, we can because no, it's all podcast. No, we can revisit. We want. <laughs> That's right. We do what we want, including signing out with another CTA. Go check out salesbread.com slash contact. Tell me what you're working on. Let's get in touch. If you like the podcast, hit us up podcast at quickmail.io and say what you like about it, what you want us to do more of. And I'll leave you there. Yeah. Last thing, put a comment if you have a question and then we'll just answer it to the next, you know, uh, at the next rapid yeah. fire. Fair enough. Leave a, leave a comment at quick podcast at quickmail.io. Even better. You All got right. it. Thanks, See you Jack. next time. Hey, Jack, what's up with the green background? Why didn't you change it? The green background, I had this giant bucket of paint. It's terrible. I was walking to my office and I just completely spilled it all over my beautiful bread painting. I got to find another artist who can put a, a, a oh, giant loaf of bread on my wall now. But in the meantime, I just got this glob of green behind me. Um, that's not what can a, I say? A subtle way to say that, you know, Japan's closed and you're fed up of having the Japan picture on the back. Yeah, well, mm. that's another that's another podcast. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Jack.